Hi, I'm Tam from HowToDrawLight.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to draw a dog in a photorealistic style. This video follows a slightly different pattern to the usual videos I upload to YouTube, as instead of recording live video footage of me drawing, the videos are going to be made up of a series of still images I've taken as the drawings progress, and I'm going to talk you through each stage of the drawing. The first stage of the drawing process is to choose an image to work from. Now I've chosen a picture of my parents' dog Jake. You could, if you wanted to, uh, make a drawing from a real life dog, uh, but I wouldn't recommend that if this is an area that you're not too confident in, as uh, trying to draw um, a real life dog, unless it's very docile or it's sleeping <laughs> can be quite challenging as they continually like to fidget around. Um, so if you can I'd go with a, a photograph of a dog and um, try and choose one as well where the dog is um, really nice and clearly focused and framed and there's lots of, sort of sharp detail in the picture because that will make it a lot easier to draw from. Once you've chosen a photograph to work from, the drawing process can begin. For the drawing I'm using a brown paper sketchbook. Uh, the reason why I choose to use a brown one as opposed to a white one is because when you put highlights in uh, at a later stage they can get a bit lost on a white background so the brown paper really helps highlights to stand out. I'm also using a graphite pencil uh, to make that clear, um, the whole pencil is graphite and not just the lead and the reason I use a pencil that's completely solid graphite is because it's that bit softer uh, than a standard graphite pencil uh, so you can create some um, smoother lines with it. In this image you can see I've um, just made some very small markings and all I've done really is try to roughly mark out where the left and right edge of the head fall at the top, where the kind of um, muzzle flows up from sort of the nose upwards, and a vertical line where roughly I think the eyes will fall. So you can follow a similar pattern to this, or you might find it easier to put physical shapes in um, and make this basic outline up out of using things like circles and ovals uh, to produce a basic outline. At this stage of the outline I've chosen a point to start putting in more detail. So you can see here that I've selected the nose to do this with and it's just the way I work. I don't know if there's anything in it or not but I find it's easier to start with an external point something like the nose or the edge of a cheek rather than start in the middle like the eyes and work your way out so I find they're one of the hardest bits to get right and if they're wrong to begin with that can throw the rest of the drawing out whereas it's a lot easier just to focus on one area that's kind of an edge part and get that right and then work your way out from there um, than it is to do it the other way around from the middle outwards so I hope that's a bit of a useful tip and I wouldn't recommend going too heavy with the detail at this stage just get the rough outline there because you can uh, refine that at the next steps the main thing we're trying to do is get the basic shape of the head done the outline at this stage is starting to look a little more like a dog now I've put in most of the main features so you can see his paws have started to form and the eyes have also started to appear. As you can see from his left eye, um, technically Jake's right eye, I had some trouble positioning that and I had to draw it out a couple of times and this is perfectly normal so don't feel bad or uh, get frustrated with yourself if you do need to draw out a feature two, three, four even more times um, It's part of the drawing process and it's actually better to recognise when you are putting it in the wrong place and redraw it than uh, not notice at all. So really do concentrate on where you think features should be and really look at your original image that you're working from 
and keep referring back to it to check that you are getting the proportions right and you're placing the features in the right places. Once you're happy with the outline um, that you've got so far and that the proportions are okay as well, um, the next step is to start adding a little bit more of the finer detail on and that's what the next series of uh, images I'm going to show you revolves around. The one above you can see uh, just below the nose to the right, sort of the bottom of the muzzle near the mouth, I've started to add a bit of a sort of a jaggedy fluffy kind of fur effect there but I haven't gone overboard with it. It's more just for personal reference as when we start to add the shading in that's what will create the fur effect, not that initial sort of jagged outline that we've made. Um, so the, uh, the finer details are quite important because they give the, uh, the drawing um, some of its character. At this point you can see I've added in a little bit of an eyebrow above the right eye and uh, a fluffy patch above the nose there where there's some kind of thinner fur going on and also define that fluffy a bit around the bottom right near the mouth uh, that's been defined a bit more too. This stage of adding in the finer detail can be really quite helpful in terms of checking that your proportions are okay because sometimes you go to draw a bit of detail in and the top of it should line up with another part of the drawing and once you put it in you realise it's not quite right and then you suddenly think, oh, well, that's because, you know, the eyes are a bit too far over or, um, you know, that cheek's not quite in the right place. And it allows you to make those further adjustments to get the proportions of the drawing as perfect as you can. I've now directed my attention onto the eyes and you can see a left eyebrow has appeared. So I've also put the detail into the actual eyes themselves. And it's really important to get this area right. Um, I spent ages looking back at my uh, photograph I was working from, making sure that I was getting the uh, proportions of the inner eye exactly in the right place um, and making sure at this stage that the eyes are really the right shape. Because um, I believe that they kind of make up the portrait overall. The eyes kind of say who the dog is, it reveals a bit of their character and I think if you get the eyes wrong it's not the same dog anymore that you're trying to draw so really do spend a lot of time on the eyes, don't rush them because they're one of the most important parts of the drawing um, and just make sure you do get those, uh, those lines and markings in the right spaces just take one part of the eye at a time so possibly start with the sort of the corner and work your way out don't try and tackle it as a whole um, and once you get one bit right then you can move on to the next part. I've added more fur outlining to the bottom of the drawing and I've also refined the shape of the paw, um, particularly sort of at the top of the paw because um, I really wasn't happy initially with where that was placed and how it was angled. So um, again as I said earlier don't feel bad if you do need to move bits around obviously got a bit of experience drawing and I don't get it 100% right every single time either. Um, I've got to move bits around and make adjustments. But I think it does make you a stronger artist if you're actually aware of these uh, bits that need adjusting and moving or the proportions changing um, than not noticing them at all. Um, so be proud of yourself if you do pick up on the fact that something's not quite in the right place. This is the final stage of adding some uh, more refined detailing to the outline. Uh, as you can see I've put some um, kind of fur markings um, on his cheeks. I've uh, pressed quite lightly with the graphite pencil here because um, as Jake's got quite a lot, a lot of white in his cheeks it's going to be harder to kind of cover that up later without then having to rub, rub out these guidelines. So, um, I've uh, just pressed lightly just to use for my own personal reference really so I know that this kind of bulk area will be a certain shade further in the drawing. Now you might be thinking I've made an error by putting this next image in upside down 
uh, however I assure you it's completely intentional. This stage um, is one of the most important stages of the outlining process um, in any drawing really and that's to look at your drawing with fresh eyes. Um, if you are like me, you've probably been working on your outline now for a good hour, maybe two or more, um, and after this amount of time, you don't see the uh, the areas of your drawing that need a little bit more work as easily um, as you do when your drawing is uh, looking normal. Um, so the, the trick is to uh, to turn the drawing upside down, and also turn your uh, photographic image upside down as well. So I just use the rotate tool on my computer to do that with. And um, really have a look at it at this new angle. And you'll probably notice things that you hadn't noticed originally when your drawing was the right way up. Uh, so I discovered with mine that that um, left eye that I had already moved a couple of times really wasn't still in the right place, it was too low down um, and that meant then having to uh, redraw it again which was a little bit of a pain because I'd uh, spent quite a long time on it um, and obviously putting the inner detail in uh, but it's one of those sacrifices you have to make that if you want to make a good drawing and you want to make an accurate drawing then you do sometimes need to uh, to rub bits out and uh, redraw them and you know if it takes you another hour it will be worth it in the long run because you'll get a better drawing as a result of it. This is the final stage of my outline drawing. Hopefully you can see it's looking something a little like Jake at the moment but until that shading's in there it's, uh, it's not a complete image. This stage is uh, it's quite important too, as it's the last step uh, before shading begins. So again, just triple check that everything is accurate and in proportion and in the right place. Uh, it's okay to make a couple of tweaks in the shading process, um, but that's still a little bit dependent and it's not always possible. Um, but anything that needs majorly uh, changing can be very difficult once the shading process has begun because if you've put heavy or dark marks down uh, that can't be rubbed out then um, it's very difficult sometimes to work around those so um, really do check that your drawing is accurate. I've tried to break down this drawing tutorial into manageable sections uh, so that everything isn't too overwhelming for you and also so that you've got a bit of time to uh, work on your outline before the uh, second part of the video goes up onto YouTube. The second part of the video is going to focus on the process of shading. So I hope you found this first part helpful. If you've got any questions at all about this video or drawing in general uh, then please visit my website www.howtodrawlike.com and visit the uh, contact page and you can send me a message through there or you can get in touch uh, through Twitter um, and you just need to visit at howtodrawlike um, on Twitter and you can send me a tweet uh, with any questions um, on there. Thank you for watching and see you back again soon. Bye for now.